Here is the article. Is Magnus Carlsen the Tom Brady of chess? Okay, interesting title. Okay, by Nathaniel Green. Chess, it may be hard to believe, is not the only game people play across the world. Thanks so much. Um, so chess, it may be hard to believe, is not the only game people play across the world. Basketball, poker, football, the alternatives are nearly endless. In fact, GM Magnus Carlsen has been spotted playing all three of those other games at one time or another. Um, very, very loaded when they say football, by the way, because when they say football, I think they mean American football, not European football. But let's keep going. In fact, or sorry, uh, where was I? Um, okay, has been spotted playing all three of those other games at one time or another. So there's clearly more to life than chess, even for its world champion. Jesting aside, this is actually a good thing. Of course, imagine if we were stuck comparing chess players all day. But no, we can also compare players across sports. For today, that means comparing Carlson to NFL quarterback Tom Brady. Why? Because we can't, but also because they are actually pretty similar. It also helps that the NFL is the most popular sport in the United States, with several star players, including Kayvon Thibodeau, Joe Burrows, and Micah Parsons, who also love chess. Okay. Um, we've actually managed to find seven ways in which Carlson and Brady are similar, but to make things interesting, we've also judged who wins each category. Spoiler alert, you're on a chess website. Even if we do compete directly with Carlson, consider it returning the favor from when he played Title Tuesday recently. Okay. All right. Next top model. Just in case you thought we were going to be making a totally serious comparison. When Carlson was just 19, he was asked to do a photo shoot with model-turned-actress Liv Tyler, and, and Google Images is full, of course, of the results of that experiment. Humorously, the CEO of the modeling company was quoted as saying, One of the core ideas of our brand is the idea of surprising and contrasting combinations. Which doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement of the selection of Carlson. I mean, even I would have made for a surprising and contrasting combination with, with the Liv Tyler. It went as poorly as you hoped. Okay, so let's keep going. This came a couple years after Brady did a campaign for Stetson Cologne in 2017, or in 2007. Nowhere on how well, how well that worked out for Stetson, but maybe the Patriots would have actually completed their perfect season instead of spectacularly blowing the Super Bowl against the Giants if Brady had been fully focused on football that season. Fortunately for Carlson, he got a li little bit better at it. A little. Okay, so we have another, another, another video. Okay, I think I'm not going to watch the videos, but let's keep going. Actually, how long is the video? I don't know. It's probably too long. Brady, uh, less, less so. Even his self-deprecation is often too self-aware to work. And that's what happened when he tried to hawk Subway sandwiches in 2021. You want me to watch it? Okay, let's, wa let's watch these two. Strong in a group, but even stronger stepping forward. The night. <laughs> Wait. What? forward except that's not true knights can go backwards until the king himself is challenged forward Okay, that was just weird. I, I have to be honest, that was very, very weird for me. Let's watch Tom Brady. Um, Seductive, irresistible, yet forbidden, bready. The new fragrance that says Subway has so much new, it didn't what the fit heck? in last ad. So they bought time in mind to talk about hearty multi-grain bread. Freshly baked. Smells so good, I can almost taste it. But you don't eat bread. What? 
I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm really confused by these uh, by these videos. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. What do we have? Nobody, as far as we know, asked Brady to keep dressing in fancy clothes and get his picture taken in black and white. He just started doing it again in his mid-40s on Instagram to promote his own clothing line. Just making sure Mr. Brady can't possibly be so competitive as to think he can outperform Miss Brady at this gig, right? Okay. Yes. Exactly, you guys. There you go. There you go. Right. Anyway. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, Giselle Bunchen, for the two of you who didn't know, and if not for her, Brady in most countries would be relegated to that guy in that sport that only the Americans care about. We leave it to the readers to judge how successful Magnus and Tom would be at modeling given their physical features. But just on the context surrounding their forays, Carlson takes a 1-0 lead. Okay. Um, the GOAT. So that was all fun and good, but there's a more obvious comparison. Carlson and Brady are the most popular picks for best chess player and best quarterback ever. But do they deserve it? When we, at, when we asked people back in August 2021, a, uh, a plurality of 37% picked Carlson as the greatest player ever, coming in at essentially 2 A and 2 B were GMs Gary Kasparov and Bobby Fischer. Combined, the three of them got 80% of the vote, but the edge was clear for Carlson. Okay. Um, so Carlson, 37 Kasparov, Fisher, 22-21. Morphy, 6%. Anon, 6%. Capablanca, 3%. Lasker, 1%. Other, 4%. Okay. And we think GM Maurice Ashley would agree that the path there for Carlson was fairly smooth. Although he wasn't the fastest starter in his pre-adolescence, Carlson's only real hiccup to number one and world champion were fairly minor, voluntarily withdrawing from the 2011 candidates and then nearly but not actually blowing the 2013 candidates, which is a story for another time. Brady, meanwhile, after largely riding his defense to three Super Bowls, um, in his first five seasons, including his rookie year on the bench, went nearly a decade before his fourth championship. Nonetheless, you've always been able to measure Brady's reputation, although not necessarily his individual performance, by how many championships his teams win. And now that he has seven titles, anyone who tries to argue against his case as the greatest is shut down. Yes, even in what they call the ultimate team sport. Okay, that's a picture from the White House. Let's keep going. Sorry, not sorry to any Brady fans, but Magnus is the better player. In fact, Carlson, Kasparov, and Fisher were all both more talented as well as more dominant versus their peers at chess than Brady has been at football. Just compare their ELO rating histories to the fact that Brady has only led the NFL in a major passing efficiency metric in two of his 20 full seasons, 2007 and 2010. Magnus has been world number one for 13 years and counting. Um, That's actually, I, I mean, I know this article is obviously a joke, but... Uh, Passing efficiency metric. That's like I feel like for many years wasn't wasn't um Drew Brees like by by metrics really really high ranked since he had like seventy five percent completion. Maybe it wasn't seventy five, but I feel like he was somewhere around seventy percent or a little more than seventy percent, and he never even came close to winning a Super Bowl. Um, maybe there's one there's one year right when they played the uh, played the Colts, I guess, and they lost. I they never won, right? Saints never won a Super Bowl, I don't think, or did they? Or am I just silly? They did win one. I remember the game against. I remember the one against the Colts. Oh, they beat the Colts in that one. Okay, my memory's bad. Okay, they beat the Colts. Do I have that wrong? Wait a second. I have to ask chat. That onside kick in the second half was that the Colts who did the onside kick, or was that the uh, or was that the the Saints? That was who who did the onside kick? Because now I just want to see if my memory's failing me. I thought the Colts did the onside kick. It was the Saints who did the kick, so they won the game. Okay, so my brain's failing me. Good to know. Okay. Uh, will he or won't he? That retirement tease. This isn't one you could have predicted a year ago, but how about Carlson and Brady both flirting with retirement at the exact same time? This is what actually spurred this article in the first place. Of course, Carlson has merely threatened to quit the World Chess Championship cycle, and while that would be a pretty huge deal, he has every plan to continue to dominate tournaments, so retirement is a bit strong. Brady, meanwhile, announced that he was calling it quits in February 2022, only to later announce within weeks that he was not retiring at all. With feet that cold, it's a surprise Brady can even walk or run. Oh right, he can't run anyway. It's also possible that Brady's story here is, to quote a GM Ben Feingold-ism, very suspicious. A report in the Boston Globe suggested that the entire saga may have been may have just been a ploy to change teams away from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers onto the Miami Dolphins and get an ownership stake in the Miami franchise. Don't worry, Tom. You can still visit Miami if you want to. Here, I even did the research for you. Okay. Um, for Carlson, quitting 
Quitting championship play would free up time to help run the things he already actually owns, which is a far cry from pretending to retire in order to buy the thing in the first place. Plus, Carlson is apparently creative enough to, to simultaneously retire and keep playing while remaining decisive in both decisions. 3-0 Magnus. Their trusty sidekicks. Every Batman, every Batman needs their Robin. For Carlson, this is his longtime second GM, Peter Heine Nielsen. For Brady, it's tight end and party animal Rob Gronkowski, who followed him from New England to Tampa Bay. In some ways, PHN and Gronk fulfill different obligations. Gronk has an innocent puppy dog reputation, at least partially cultivated, but still, but still. While Nielsen will sometimes make the statements about chess politics that Magnus best avoids. Okay. This is pretty funny. Advantage again for Magnus here because it's hard to imagine Carlson being a significantly worse chess player if Nielsen had never joined his team in 2013. Carlson was world number one years before then, even if he won the candidates and world title just after they partnered up. Brady, meanwhile, is demonstra demonstrably worse when he doesn't have Gronkowski on his team. Don't ask about another Brady sidekicks, his personal trainer, Alex Guerrero, or we'll have to give Magnus two points here. Okay. Similar play styles. For the longest time, Carlson's game was accumulating several nearly imperceptible advantages and grinding down his adversaries. He took a 2-0 lead in the 2013 World Championship while exclusively or with exclusively this type of game against Anon before winning 3-0 once Anon had to start desperately playing for wins. All right, now I'm going to go through the game. Um, Carlson has become a better attacker in recent years, but he's still not the flashiest player. Neither is Brady, who generally survives off of very short passes from very clean pockets. Sometimes it feels like these guys shouldn't be beating you, and yet they consistently are. Okay, very weird comparison. Um, there was even a period of multiple seasons in the middle of Brady's career where, where he couldn't throw deep, the NFL equivalent of an all-out attack in chess. It wasn't until he discovered career best, if still somewhat inconsistent arm strength in his late 30s and maintained it well into his 40s that he loaded up as a... He, he locked up his status as a player. Um, I don't even know what this is. Uh, I know this is they're, they're trying to be funny and make jokes, but uh, it wasn't until he discovered his curve best of still somewhat inconsistent arm strength in his late thirties. Brady has always had a great arm, so this is this is insane. Um, meanwhile, the famous game against I am later GM Sipka Ernst from Carlson's youth shows that he could always attack. All right. Um. Carlson just developed to be better suited to the slow grind before his work with GM Daniil Duba brought some of that aggressive aggressiveness back out of him. 5-0 Magnus. Okay. The big 2016 comeback. Brady finally wins. Coming back from 28-3 in Super Bowl ally against the Atlanta Falcons is more impressive than Carlson's one-game comeback against GM Sergey Karyakin, right? Coincidentally, both of these technically happened in 2016. The Super Bowl was played in 2017, but is part of the 26th season by how the NFL tracks its September to February season. Okay. Well, who you're playing matters. Karyakin is almost impossible to beat when he sticks to chess. He's apparently very easy to take out when he doesn't. While the Falcons had the worst defense in Super Bowl history, even though that didn't stop Brady from playing real badly for a whole half. Plus, considering all the drawn games in 21st century chess and all the rules favoring offense in 21st century football, being down 1-0 with only four games left in the match is arguably a bigger hole than even 25 points in a football game just after halftime. Not only was Atlanta's defense known to be terrible going into that game, but Brady had an interception go through a defender's hands on the game-tying possession. This just after the Falcons had gotten in range for a fairly easy field goal, but came away punting for nothing, which also would have put the game away. And there, there was, of course, the pick six Brady threw in the first half that put his team down 21-0. Okay. Um, okay, one of these comebacks was much more of a random fluke than the other, and it wasn't Carlson's. 6-0. Football versus football. Okay, now Brady wins, right? Magnus might play football too. The real football, even to people on five of the six inhabited continents. The, the one where every player, not just a rarely used specialist, is supposed to kick the ball. And never mind the outfit, it's cold in Holland in January. Okay. Uh, do they have video of both? They don't have a video. They have video of Magnus, but they don't have a video of Brady. So let's keep going. Um, obviously, however, Brady is better at gridiron football than Carlson is at association football. It's a job for one and a hobby for the other after all. But we're actually talking about fantasy football, I decided. We don't know if Brady plays, but as someone to have on your fantasy team, he's not actually the best because, again... He can't run very well. 
except for the fact that in fantasy football, touchdowns is all that matters. Um, touchdowns is what you need. If, if you play fantasy football and you throw touchdowns, you get you get points. So if if uh, if Tom Brady runs for uh, runs for for twenty yards, that's not going to make any difference. Um, okay. Uh, we don't know if Brady plays, but as someone to have on your fantasy team, he's not actually the best because, again, he can't run very well. Magnus, meanwhile, is actually really good at fantasy football, making it to number one in a 2019 Premier League competition with a player pool 7 million strong. He even still has his accolade listed in his Twitter bio. Twitter bio. So guess what? 7-0 Magnus. Touchdown. Conclusion. Carlson didn't have to break a sweat to win that matchup. Maybe we can find a more difficult one next time. Carlson versus LeBron James, Lionel Messi, or Mike Trout. Not now. Those might be close. Let's get some real athletes in here. Okay. Yeah. I. I. I my mom's wanted me to read that article. Um. That's pretty funny, actually. That's that's pretty funny. Um. He didn't actually become number one. I think. I think for a brief period of time, Magnus was number one. Uh, I think it was for maybe one week when he was number one. Uh. When he was number one in a fantasy fantasy football soccer pool, obviously. Uh. But it wasn't for. It wasn't. It wasn't at the end of the season. 